Over to Iran, where the Baha'i community is experiencing a surge in persecution following tension between the US and Iran. In recent months, dozens have been arrested and detained for lengthy periods. Venus Kalesi is from the Australian Baha'i community, and she says the persecutions are a systematic effort to economically impoverish the community. Since the 1979 Islamic Revolution, the Baha'i community has been systematically persecuted across every phase of life, including death. Now, most recently, what we are observing is an escalation in terms of the economic impoverishment of the Baha'i community. So at the end of November, just when the country went under a national lockdown because of the COVID-19 global health crisis, about 100 agents of the government raided the shops and homes of Baha'is throughout the country in over seven cities, including places like Tehran, Mashhad, uh, Esfahan, uh, Karaj, Kerman. And what they did was they raided the homes and shops of the Baha'is and demanded that they hand over the deeds to the properties owned by Baha'is. And so this is an effort to economically impoverish the community. Additionally, we've seen that uh, in a very small town, called Evel, which is in the north of Iran. This is in the Mazandaran province. Uh, the Baha'i community, which has existed there for 160 years, recently had um, an appeal upheld such that uh, the court has made a determination uh, about the illegitimacy of ownership of, of the land and property owned by some 27 Baha'is in this very small village and declared it illegal. Can you give us a sense of what kind of discrimination the Baha'i community experience on a day-to-day -day basis? It's actually government policy to systematically block the progress of this community as a viable entity in Iran. So what we've seen is different tactics over the decades of persecution. Um, and this includes things like depriving members of the Baha'i community access to higher education, We've also seen the way in which Baha'is are blocked from um, working in the public sector, but also increasingly there's pressure in the private sector as well. So uh, Baha'is have their businesses sealed, their business licenses revoked, um, they're subjected to arbitrary raids and imprisonment. These, these go on for very long cycles, which can take up to years. And this, of course, creates immense psychological pressure for the community. The historical and cultural sites of the Baha'i community in Iran have been erased. And in addition to that, the country uh, has mis- and disinformation, which is wild and rampant across the internet and also um, in state-sponsored media. And you mentioned before about how the pandemic has worsened the situation for the community. Can you tell us a bit more about how? Well, obviously, um, Iran was heavily hit uh, when, when the pandemic um, emerged. And uh, when these raids happened um, during a national lockdown, this placed the homes um, at threat because, you know, there was elderly there, there was children. This is a time when social isolation needs to be respected. And uh, these raids that happened to the homes and shops of the Baha'is placed them at considerable risk. How big is the Baha'i community here in Australia and how challenging is it to find out what's really going on in Iran? Well, the Baha'i community uh, in Australia is somewhere between 14 to 20,000. Um, the community does have uh, quite a significant number of Iranian Baha'is because, of course, of the pressures over the last four decades. And so um, there's a lot of concern uh, amongst family members who are now a part of the fabric of Australian society uh, because what they have experienced is actually generations of persecution. So while they might be here in Australian society contributing um, across this fabulous nation, of course they have concerns for the well-being of their loved ones in Iran. And, uh, you know, they're always... Uh, worried about their, the safety and security of their loved ones. And, uh, you know, of course, there is things like the internet, um, which provide information, but, but this is at an immense risk uh, for those who are in Iran as well. And what are you calling on the Australian government to do to help? Well, first of all, um, it needs to be acknowledged that um, over the last four decades, the Australian government has been incredibly supportive about the plight of the Baha'is in Iran. And uh, this has included uh, successive 
bipartisan motions at the federal level. And just on Wednesday, actually, at the UN General Assembly, Australia co-sponsored uh, a resolution which um, highlighted the human rights situation in Iran and specifically mentioned the situation of the Baha'i community. But of course, um, Australia is in a unique position. It's one of the few Western countries who has maintained relations with a Iran over the last four decades. And so it is hoped that the human rights situation around broadly, including the situation of the Baha'i community, continues to be raised uh, in both the national and international fora. And uh, Australia and Iran actually have a human rights dialogue. So if this was to occur next year, uh, of course, naturally, we would wish that um, the situation of the Baha'is would be raised in, in this dialogue process. And specifically, uh, we encourage the international scrutiny to continue because uh, what we've seen now is this economic impoverishment. We've seen a multiplicity of tactics. And the decision regarding the community in Avell really needs to be uh, repelled. Uh, and it, you know, the Baha'is need to be given access to their property. No Baha'i in Iran should be placed uh, in prison because of their belief or practice. Venus Kalesi, thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much, Yvonne.